everyone welcome back to another video um i hope you're doing well as always it's getting towards the end of my time in buenos aires this is my last week here so i thought it would be fun to make a video about one of my favorite spots in the city which is the centro cultural recoleta um buenos aires is home to an abundance of centro culturales like the ccr the centro cultural borges centro cultural san martin as well as smaller, more independent centers like La Casa del Arbol y Centro Cultural Richards. Um, and these are multi-purpose art spaces that are free to the public and host a slew of creative events from contemporary exhibitions to films, performances, and live music, while simultaneously functioning as cafes, bars, and study spaces. So maybe I'm just living under a rock, but Honestly, such a plethora of creative spaces that are free to the public is something that I haven't really found in the United States or the United Kingdom. More often than not, artistic hubs tend to come with an entrance fee or they lack a casual social element. And in contrast, the landscape of cultural centers in Buenos Aires feels like a very new kind of creative space, one that's much more relaxed and accessible. It's a phenomenon that I really want to highlight on the channel because I think it touches on a lot of stuff that we care about at Art in Action, like accessibility, socially engaged art, and breaking down the boundaries between art and everyday life. And I've chosen to focus on the Centro Cultural Recoleta because honestly it's my favorite one, and also because I think it does a really good job of bridging the history that I talked about in the last video with the present day creative scene in Buenos Aires. So without further ado, Let's get started. So the Centro Cultural Recoleta is located, as you can imagine, in Recoleta, which is a very affluent neighborhood in Buenos Aires um, that's home to quite a few museums, including the Museo de Arte Latino Americano, and the Museo Nacional de Bellas Artes. Um, it opened in 1980 during the dictatorship in Argentina at a time when there weren't many institutions for artists to display work that pushed the creative conventions of the time. And since its conception, CCR has strived to be a platform for art that speaks to a wide range of lived experiences and that pushes back against the status quo. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it exhibited the work of socially engaged artists such as Ana Gachardo, Marcus Lopez, and Liliana Maresca, who exhibited a series of shopping carts painted silver and gold to critique the mistreatment of the working class at the time. And the CCR has also hosted performances by celebrated international artists such as David Bowie and Yoko Ono. At the moment, they have an exhibition called Breve Historia de la Eternidad, or A Brief History of Eternity, which examines examples of refuge from oppressive social and political systems. Across the courtyard, there's another show called Pura Grafica that gives a survey of the styles and techniques used to make graphic posters in Buenos Aires, which is a very common medium for disseminating political messages here. And lastly, CCR has an interactive exhibition about the Zodiac, which my friend and I spent a good 30 minutes of analyzing when we went there, so there's really something for everyone. And now for a few words about the building's design. CCR's architecture takes after the Centre Pompidou in Paris, and for those who don't know, the Centre Pompidou is a cultural center that was created under the leadership of President Georges Pompidou in 1977. Determined to break down the divisions between the arts, it is part fine art museum, part music venue, part library, and then part social space. And this kind of fluidity is really embodied in the space's architecture, which places the internal organs of the building like the stairs and brightly painted pipes on the outside. CCR's architecture reflects a similar kind of fluidity, effortlessly linking interior and exterior spaces and employing a very playful form of interior design with bright patterns and colors, beginning with, of course, the pastel mural on the building's entrance. The mural changes every year, and this one was designed by an Argentine artist called Sebastian Curie to reflect the theme Amor de Verano, or Summer of Love, which really comes through in the explosion of colors and shapes used to depict the two lovers on the mural. 
So inside the CCR, you'll find hallways painted with whimsical murals leading to the study area and the galleries that flow very seamlessly into several courtyards, which are accented with these bright colors and lush plants. There's a section with an array of tables, desks, and outlets where you'll find people studying, and you'll also find me working on our project. <laughs> um, and I've even seen people taking naps on the reclining chairs there a couple of times, which is definitely a mood. So yeah, it's very much a free space for people to do whatever they want, if that's just to use the bathroom or take a nap. And the Centro Cultural Recoleta is what Ray Oldenburg refers to as a third place, which is any place that isn't your home or work and that has minimal financial barriers to accessing you. And this could be a cafe, a movie theater, or a pub. And obviously all of these venues are great for bringing people together, but I really appreciate that the CCR is free because I think it really changes your relationship to the space. For example, when you go to a cafe and you buy a cup of coffee for $5 or whatever, you feel like you have to invest a certain amount of time in that space. And then once you've left, you no longer have access to it until you buy something else. Meanwhile, at the CCR, those financial barriers don't exist. And there's a much more flexible relationship between visitors and the space. You can come and go, you can hang out all day or just for 20 minutes. And there's also a very fluid relationship between art and leisure. You can pop in to look at an exhibit and then go back to working or chatting with your friends, or you can spend all day just looking at the art. It's a kind of layout that really breaks down the barriers between the fine art, activism, and the everyday space by weaving the three of them together. So of course, while there's a lot about the Centro Cultural Recoleta that is very forward thinking and inclusive, I do want to mention that its presence in a very affluent neighborhood does create barriers in terms of accessibility. Just because a place is free and proclaims to be open to all still doesn't mean that everyone feels welcome in that space or in that neighborhood. And that affluent environment also influences what kind of art is exhibited. So even though the CCR endeavors to champion activist artists and collectives, it's important to consider what work isn't being shown because it's perceived as too militant or too far on the margins of the conventional art space or even in direct opposition to that space. Furthermore, some of the art institutions, such as the Instituto di Tella, um, were able to stay open during the dictatorship because the work they were exhibiting wasn't really pushing against the political status quo of the period. And so I think it's important to consider to what extent Central Cultural Recoleta was able to stay open during that time for the same reason. Of course, there are records of very politically engaged art being displayed there at the time, so it's hard to determine that, but I think it is something to consider nonetheless. So to conclude, I think the Centro Cultural Recoleta and the larger trend of cultural centers in Buenos Aires offers a really compelling model for merging art and innovation as well as conversations about social justice with leisure and community. They provide a very welcomed respite from the frequency of pay to enter spaces that you typically find in urban areas. Um, and yeah, who knows, maybe Tara and I will open our own cultural center one day. Uh, to be determined. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and yeah, following along. I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!